<laughs> well, I don't know exactly what's inside of this, but I certainly have a little sneaking suspicion. This is pretty exciting. Wow, look at this. Clearly these weren't built for me, they're gigantic. P.S. Uh, it'll fit you, but easy getting it on off as the stitching is over 100 years old. I'm gonna make sure I don't quit my day job. Um, I'm starting to sweat. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and in today's video, I'm going to be unboxing a care package sent to me by my shoemaker, Dominic Casey. Of course, anyone that's been watching this channel knows about Dominic Casey, one of my favorite bespoke shoemakers in the world, does absolutely exceptional work, but more than that, Dominic Casey is just a great guy and a lot of fun. And so we've uh, kind of built a little bit of a, uh, I guess now it is a little bit of a tradition, if you will, where as we're kind of working through uh, my future bespoke commissions, uh, Dominic has actually started sending me little care packages, if you will, uh, with some surprises inside and a little bit of homework uh, that really kind of build up to whatever it is that we're gonna do next. So here we are, this is, um, this I would say is the coronavirus sized package to make up for how little we've been able to see each other over the last six months. And so without further ado, let's open this up and see what Dominic has put inside. <laughs> well, I don't know exactly what's inside of this, but I certainly have a little sneaking suspicion. This is pretty exciting. Let's set that aside. <laughs> All right, so we've got a few things here. We have two absolutely gigantic, clearly boots. So I can't wait to see what these are whenever we unwrap those. We have a, uh, another shoe right here that is uh, indicated as a non-classics. So we've spoken about doing some more casual shoes, so I suspect that there's really something kind of new and interesting in that. And then Dominic, of course, um, you know, I don't even know where to begin with Dominic, but he's got uh, several different packages here that, that are labeled. This is the first. Uh, Classico, second, non-Classico, and third, the Merry Christmas. He told me to open these uh, in order, uh, but to open these first before we get started with the letter. Okay, well, let's start first with these boots. Um, Dominic and I have been speaking a lot about boots lately. Of course, you know, he's been working on a little bit of a research project uh, on the Wellington boots and the history of the Duke of Wellington. Of course, that's kind of intersected uh, our Wellington a collection of uh, luxury shoe shine accessories. And uh, it's been something very interesting to me. And so I know that uh, this has been something we've been going back and forth on. Well, let me just open this first. <laughs> wow, look at this. Clearly these weren't built for me, they're gigantic. Uh, but a beautiful pair of boots, I can't wait to learn more about these. <laughs> All right, look at this. Well, I'm just looking on the shoe tree uh, that this is apparently a very old pair of Maxwell and Sons uh, boots. So I don't know exactly what kind of boot this is, but I suspect that we will be finding out shortly. So we will set these here. Marvelous uh, pair of boots. I know that uh, Dominic has been doing a lot of research lately uh, into boots. It's one of his specialties. There's just a, even less than a handful of bespoke shoemakers left in England. 
that can even do a bespoke boot. And Dominic Casey is one of those. It's been a topic we've been discussing a lot. It's a, a goal of mine to do an entire series of videos on boot making uh, because it's just such a specialized art. And so this is something we've been speaking about. And so uh, I look forward to kind of seeing uh, what these boots are about. So this looks like a mock-up of a pair of shoes. We've got the insole end with cap uh, or remove. So we'll set this right here and then let's get started on what we have in our homework. So let's open this first one up and see what we have. All right. Well, so if you uh, watched our last unboxing video with Dominic Casey, uh, he sent me a mock uh, pattern of a uh, spiral cut uh, wingtip, I believe it was, you know, that I put together with tape. And so it looks like he took pleasure in seeing uh, me go through that exercise. And we have right here what seems to be additional pattern pieces uh, to a shoe. We've got the front part, so this would be uh, the cap, the side vamps, this is the back of the shoe, seamless uh, heel. Uh, what do we have here? This is the seamless back right there. This is the toe cap and uh, the tongue. So look at that. So let's see what else. We've got more stuff here. So uh, Dominic Casey, uh, hi Kirby. I sent you a pattern for the semi brogue style that we made in brown suede. If you've got a spare 10 minutes, you may want to put it together. So we'll have to give that a shot. There are also some pigskin samples to show how the decoration would look. Uh, because of the textured nature of the leather, you can get different looks with the, um, the pigskin, of course. I've also enclosed a great photos of an old Anthony Cleverly style from the 60s and made a quick sample of how the punching works. Hope this helps clarify your thinking I've made my choice, best Dominic. So uh, that'll be interesting to see as we compare the two. Uh, and this is a photograph of an old uh, model from Anthony Cleverly. You know, Anthony Cleverly back uh, predates George Cleverly. This is back when Anthony Cleverly was just a shoemaker uh, and he was uh, widely renowned uh, for really making some of the most beautiful uh, bespoke shoes uh, in all of Britain. And uh, this is a photocopy of a particular sample uh, from some of his marketing material. And you can see it's a black cap toe Oxford uh, and it would have been done in pigskin. So part of the inspiration for this pair of shoes. Uh, and then he wasn't joking. Uh, he really did kind of put these together to show what that uh, punching would have looked like. So I guess it's a few different styles. So this would be kind of a large punch, slightly smaller punch, right? Small punch with gimp. The gimping is you know, the uh, small triangular kind of cuts along the edge of the piece of leather. And then this was Anthony Cleverly style. This is very fascinating, which is a very uh, small punching. Looks like a single row of punching, followed by a really quite exceptionally fine uh, gimping here. So if we get these together, let's try to compare these. So this would be the single line, right, gimping. Slightly larger gimping right here, followed by a single punch. Is that even a single? Look at that. Yep, that's a single punch, double punch, single punch, double punch. So that's more traditional. Uh, and then right here is the large, which is, um, again, gimping across the top. Uh, double punch or single punch, double punch, single punch, double punch. So uh, that is really interesting. I think one of the most difficult decisions whenever you're having shoes made uh, because there really is uh, no constraint of what you can have your shoemaker make, uh, which actually makes it an even more difficult decision as you consider all the various different possibilities. Let's look at the second package. So this is the uh, non-classic. Uh, okay, so what do we have here? 
So Kirby, non-classico, following from your conversation about the John Lobb single seam shoe, I have uh, cut you a Balmoral with a single seam. Ooh, very interesting. Top uh, marks if you can get this to center in paper. The nature of the pattern making process for this style involves a lot of controlled distortion uh, to convert a three-dimensional shape into a two-dimensional pattern. So it's much easier uh, to get together in leather than in paper. There is a special shape at the back for a reason, but you'll have to ask unless you can work it out yourself. So here we go, a little bit of a challenge. So let's set this aside for a moment and see what we have uh, left for our grand finale. Uh, happy Christmas, as they would say in Britain. Okay, Dominic Casey. To go with your Wellington brand, you need a pair of Wellington boots. And trust me, Kirby, they don't come any better than this. Uh, early in the 20th century, Maxwell's, who were established in 1750, took over the Royal Military Bootmakers, Faulkner and Sons, in Dover Street. Thus, the iconic Maxwell of Dover Street business was established. These classic boots from this period, about 1910, the heyday of British and London bootmaking. They are not riding boots. When the Duke of Wellington conceived of this style of boot, he had already spent the day in his riding boots. So he asked his bootmaker to make him something lower, softer, and more flexible, which he could wear in the evening at his club or the theater or dinner. At the same time, men were beginning to wear their trousers outside their boots, so they needed slimmer fitting boots, legs uh, on their boots. This was the result, a straight leg boot with box calf vamp and heel counter and an unlined goatskin leg. The construction is the same as you see in your more familiar cowboy boot, where a front and back panel are joined together along the side seam. Uh, among the bottom, you have a 3 8 leather sole, a beveled waist, and a small pitched heel, neither of which are on a riding boot, no spur box or rest for a military boot. As Wellington was the fashion icon of the day, this became the fashion boot of its day. Enjoy, best wishes, Dominic. A P.S. Uh, it'll fit you, but easy getting it on off as the stitching is over 100 years old. So uh, I don't know if I'm brave enough to try that boot on, uh, but I certainly might uh, pull the shoe trees out and take a look at it. So this is a, um, I wouldn't even call it a replica. This is an actual example, a period piece of a proper Wellington boot. Wow, what a gift, Dominic, for sending me this. Of course, the Duke of Wellington is kind of one of my heroes, if you will. Uh, he's kind of in some way kind of a namesake uh, of, um, of the company in so many ways. Uh, of course, you know, uh, having been such a successful military uh, commander uh, and a fashion icon of his uh, day, he represents kind of uh, really uh, two different worlds that uh, to me are really fascinating. Uh, and, you know, he literally invented the Wellington boot, as uh, Dominic so uh, precisely described there. Of course, the riding boots of the days, uh, you know, came up over the knee, you know, were hard to get on and off, uh, were incredibly cumbersome. And so the Duke of Wellington, whenever he retired back to his camp or his tent at the end of the day, uh, wanted to be able to take those riding boots off, uh, but slip on something uh, more comfortable, more versatile, uh, something that could be worn into the city. And thus came the idea of the Wellington boot. Interesting trivia is that uh, John Lobb on St. James's Street actually has the original miniature uh, prototype of the Wellington boot that they made uh, whenever uh, the Duke of Wellington wrote to Maxwell of Dover Street kind of requesting this design. So they had a little miniature made up, not an entire boot, sent it to the Duke of Wellington for his approval, uh, and therein, uh, I guess, was the creation or the genesis of the famous Wellington boot. And here is an example in person, absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at this outsole. I mean, look at the uh, steel kind of heel counter right here. I mean, you wouldn't want to walk on your uh, wife's wooden floors with this. A beautiful kind of thick double sole, something that you would expect from a proper military boot. Uh, and again, you know, nice shape to it, but nothing, um, you know, nothing too extraordinary. A goatskin upper, a skinnier leg, because in this day, as Dominic was saying, men started wearing their trousers on the outside of their boots. Uh, and a proper, um, not even a, a three-piece, but a four-piece boot tree. So you'd have one piece in here, the two sides, and, and then the wedge. Uh, so these are, 
Uh, these are really priceless. I'm actually quite surprised Dominic was brave enough to mail them to me. Uh, but boy, am I going to have fun with these. So we'll have to film an entire another video uh, on these um, because they really deserve a video in and of themselves. So uh, I don't know what to say. I'm, uh, I'm just totally flabbergasted there. So that's amazing. So let's set this aside and go back to some of the homework. Uh, so this is apparently a mock-up uh, of the uh, cap to Oxford uh, on my last. As I'm seeing now, I'm just now realizing that this is in, in fact the seamless uh, Balmoral. So a Balmoral is kind of uh, an interesting style where you see the vamp go all the way uh, back uh, kind of to the heel. Uh, and it's a very kind of interesting style here where it kind of uh, bows down. So the pattern starts right here underneath the arch, kind of goes around the front of the vamp over the outside edge to the heel. And then here it kind of transitions up into the facing uh, of the actual shoe. So that again is uh, quite interesting and some trickery there. So um, it's hard to believe that this uh, is the pattern here and seeing, seeing it uh, made up like that might actually help me a little bit. All right, let's try my hand at this homework and see if I can put this, this pattern together. I'm going to pull out a little bit of tape and get this ready uh, because these patterns really don't like to stay together. So he's made it a little bit easy on me in that he's got some tracing here. I'm going to align the laces right here and follow that dotted line. Let's see. You know, pattern making, you know, sounds and looks so easy when done well uh, and by a skilled professional, but uh, I really can't imagine how difficult it is to actually do in person. I'm already messing it up, so I messed that up. Misaligned on me. I'm gonna make sure I don't quit my day job. Um, just gonna go with it. Take this around. My shoe's got a few creases on it. And then this is the other side of the facings. It's gonna come around to right here. All right, so there we go. I'm in. Not an exceptional uh, job by me, by any means, but we got it there. And again, as we saw, a single piece of leather, single cut, able to make uh, this kind of come together as a shoe. Uh, and this is kind of the finished one right here. Um, you can see it again, starting right here, going around, coming back up kind of right here, which is kind of a little tricky bit. You can see that uh, in this pattern piece right here. It's really just kind of an edge. Um, and then that goes up across the facing of the leather. Um, and here we go. And so Dominic provided this with a cap, but he taped it on there uh, so that I could remove it if I wanted to. And I don't know, I kind of like it with the cap, so I'm gonna leave that on there for right now. So I actually have the first pair of suede shoes that Dominic did for me uh, here in the office. And um, beautiful uh, cap toe semi brogue and a, a medium brown suede. Of course, it's got kind of the Dominic Casey, uh, Kirby Clubland, a grony style toe beautiful kind of soft, round, elegant toe, but also nice kind of a vertical puff to it. It's not flat across the top. It doesn't chisel down. Beautiful, absolutely elegant, kind of classic shape. It really is a, a just an absolutely beautiful design. I look forward to having Dominic uh, do more shoes with this particular uh, toe shape. And so the question is, is, you know, do we do something like this, you know, really interesting, a spiral cut Adelaide, uh, or do we uh, consider something, you know, more like this uh, particular model uh, inspired by the Anthony Cleverly catalog, uh, which is a simple uh, kind of semi brogue uh, in a black pigskin with various, um, I guess, different kind of punching. So, you know, here we go. We've got like that punching right here, the larger punching, or this is the punching of the kind of medium punching, or as we have 
right here, I don't know, maybe that's across the toe cap, is the traditional Anthony Cleverly punch with that really kind of small single uh, style or single row of holes. So I'm not gonna be able to resolve on this today. I think I might need to sleep on this and kind of mull on it. I'm really kind of on the fence as to what my next pair of shoes uh, will be. Uh, I really like the idea of having something a little bit different, but I just use so much black, I get so much wear out of it. And so that's where the idea of the black uh, pigskin came from. You know, I still can do a black pair of shoes, uh, but it'll be really uh, differentiated uh, with the use of a really interesting uh, leather, uh, or pigskin in this case, that has a lot of visual texture to it. Um, so this is kind of the direction I'm going, but I've also thought about doing something really different than your traditional cap toe Oxford, and instead doing something like a Balmoral uh, here, you know, where you've got this kind of long horizontal line that goes along the side uh, in a calfskin also, something I could use. I've also thought about doing uh, something in a really dark, kind of rich burgundy, something that's really kind of a burgundy black, something that I can wear uh, with a navy, uh, but could also wear with uh, my grays and my blacks, uh, but still adding a little bit of touch of color. I thought that would be fun. And of course, one day, and kind of the long tail, it would be really interesting to work on a pair of boots, uh, even if they were almost just a display pace. Um, and a pair of Wellington boots would really be a fun project. And it would be a project that if we ever did it, we'd really want to document that because the work that goes into a proper boot uh, really eclipses uh, the work that goes in to even the finest pair of bespoke shoes. The really nuanced techniques uh, that are used to make a pair of riding boots uh, this day and age are almost relics. I mean, there's just even few shoemakers that know how to make a beautiful pair of boots. So here we go. I mean, another uh, absolutely fun unboxing from Dominic Casey. He never ceases to surprise me uh, with kind of the new and the interesting. And Dominic is certainly a one that enjoys uh, kind of playing around and having fun with the various different ideas for commissions, uh, as even I do. And so he's been an absolutely exceptional shoemaker, as you guys have seen. I mean, this pair of suede uh, Capto Semi Brogues, the black uh, Capto Oxfords that he made for me. Absolutely stunning shoes made to the absolute highest level by an absolutely lovely individual. So Dominic, hey, thank you so much for this. I'm gonna throw them in the back here as a part of our set. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I'm Kirby Allison, and of course, I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that red subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. And make sure you please follow me at Kirby Allison on Instagram. It's the best way to stay up to date about what we have going on here, kind of in this world. And if you haven't visited KirbyAllison.com, I invite you to do so. Of course, it's how we support this channel. And there you'll find the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other great clothing accessories like this beautiful burgundy London dot tie that I'm wearing today, pocket square socks, and so much more. So please do take a moment after this video, visit KirbyAllison.com. I'm Kirby Allison, and thanks for watching. Today I'm wearing one of my favorite suits from the Him or Johnny Brothers or Davidge.com. This is a dark charcoal, single-breasted suit made from Draper's Five Star Fabric. Now, this is a bulletproof fabric. It's heavy, it's got beautiful drape, and I absolutely love this suit. I'm wearing it with a white bespoke Charvet shirt and a sovereign grade burgundy London dot tie. I love the large kind of white dots on this burgundy tie, and the burgundy just looks absolutely beautiful against the monochromatic gray suit. I also have a sovereign grade printed silk pocket square. I'm wearing it with a pair of high-waisted trousers cut for braces, burgundy vertical rib cotton dress socks, again, sovereign grade, and my bespoke black semi-brogues from Dimitri Gomez in Paris.